Okay, so what should Christians do with doubt? This is a question I get all the time from the religious OCD community, and I wanted to address it really briefly today. My name is Jamie Eckerd. I share biblical content about religious OCD and associated anxiety. Today, I just wanna talk briefly about doubt. I am not talking about uh, pernicious skepticism of the atheists who are trying to discredit and disprove Christianity. I'm talking about sincere, genuine believers who are studying and studying and studying and thinking and thinking and thinking and writing notebook after notebook of notes, trying to assuage their doubts, um, but they just can't quite get to a feeling of certainty. There's always something that, that, that they feel insecure about or that they can't quite work through. And so what's going on? Why is this happening? And what should we do? Let me first start out by saying that if you have obsessive compulsive disorder or if you have any OCD tendencies, I know a lot of people out there make comics about OCD, but it is a real mental health disorder. And OCD actually creates a maladaption in the brain where it, is not allowing you to sense closure the same way other people sense closure. So there's always just like this constant questioning and questioning and questioning. Did I really wash my hands enough? Did I really turn the stove off? Am I really saved? And there's just all these questions that we can't seem to answer no matter how much we study or check and check and check. So with that being said, that might apply to you. I don't know who is watching this video, but most of my watchers have OCD. So I wanna just talk about what do we do with this doubt? What do we actually, how do we respond to it? One thing to remember is that the Bible itself maintains tension between truth seeking and mystery. Let me read you a passage from John 8, 32. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So we know that God wants us to seek truth. In fact, this idea of searching for answers and seeking truth is guaranteed, according to scripture, to give us freedom and to set us free from the things that we struggle with and the doubts and confusions and controversies in our minds. We are guaranteed freedom. However, at the same time, this idea of truth seeking and the freedom that it brings is held in tension with the idea of mystery. Here's another passage from 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. So this is crazy. This is basically saying it's giving us this list, like a bulleted list of all kinds of things that are a mystery in the religious life. I mean, if you read that verse, like we're talking about the incarnation, that's a mystery. Definitely can't understand how God can become human, how Jesus was fully God, fully man. Don't understand that. The incarnation is a mystery. The whole life of Christ, like how? How could Jesus, I mean, the Bible says that Jesus was tempted in everything just like I am, but he didn't sin. How Jesus did that? How did you do that? Like, how did, like, we don't understand the whole life of Christ. Our own experience of faith, that passage indicates that our experience of faith is a mystery. How does a person made from dust with sinful human propensities and fallibilities, how do we actually experience saving faith I don't know. That's a mystery. Like that is just like, I don't know how God gets a hold of a human being, but it's a beautiful thing. I'm so glad that it happens. I just don't understand all of it. So there's this tension then between seeking truth, seek to understand, seek knowledge and wisdom, but hey, there's some mystery. You're not gonna figure it all out. What is a mystery? When scripture talks about mystery, what do we actually mean? Like mystery is something where there is an objective truth out there, but my brain doesn't have complete access to that objective truth. It's out there, I know there's truth, God knows what the truth is, but my brain can't quite access it. If you think about like a murder mystery or something like that, murder mystery, okay, we got that word mystery there. What we're talking about is a detective or his team of people, they're trying to figure out who done it. They're trying to like unearth facts and truths about a case, but many times we have these cold cases where they just don't figure it out. They can't quite, somebody did the killing. Someone killed someone, but the detectives can't figure it out. And so we have cold cases that go for all eternity unfigured out. That's what a mystery is. There is objective truth behind the scenes somewhere, but we don't always 
ascertain that perfectly. It's just, it's just a beautiful and kind of crazy reality how truth and mystery are held in tension. One more verse I wanna share with you, Colossians 1 verses 26 and 27. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So truth and mystery are not an either or, it's like a yes and. Truth and mystery are existing in a complementary way, they exist together. There are things we understand about God and then there are things we don't understand about God. And it's like this beautiful spiral of getting closer and closer. The closer we get to Christ, the more we understand, but there's never really a point where we reach a full entire understanding of all the things of God. I think for for all eternity, when we're in heaven, we, we will continue admiring and learning and growing in our understanding of who God is and, and how all this stuff works. So it's not that one sort of is experienced to the exclusion of the other. As Christians, all of us are in an experience of growing in truth and a, and a deeper appreciation of the mysteries of God. Certainly, much of the mystery has been revealed to us and we experience it and we taste that mystery in a way that I think, I think when you think about it, even now, like the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory, like having a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ, like, like that's a mystery that you feel and you experience on a very personal level, like a relationship, but you can't really explain it in these like zeros and ones. You can't quantify it or weigh it or explain it to another person. Like, what does it feel like? What does it mean to have a relationship with Christ? It's it's also kind of a mystery. So there's, it's just, it's incredible. This, this combination of knowledge and not knowledge. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's just a normal part of the Christian life. So if you are a Christian that has obsessive compulsive disorder and that attaches at times to your religious experience, here's my suggestion. Instead of worrying and getting frantic about your uncertainties and saying like, oh, no, I have things in my religious life that I can't explain. I don't have security about this or that or whatever. Instead of worrying and like ruminating on it for hours and hours and hours on end and trying to figure this out, I really would suggest reframing what you're struggling with and say to yourself, I'm not having doubt. I am having an appreciation for the mysteries of God. That feels a little different, right? Like, oh no, I'm having doubt. I must be a bad Christian. You're not having doubts, most likely. I mean, I don't know what your specific issue is, but with many of the things that we deal with in the religious OCD community, it's better for us to say, I am having a deeper appreciation right now for the mysteries of God. I don't understand this. And I've been working on this for a few months now and I still don't understand it. So it might just be something to put on my, I don't know shelf and just move forward in my walk with God. Maybe one day he's gonna help me understand it. Maybe one day he won't and I won't figure this out until I get to heaven. I don't know. But it's just an appreciation for the mysteries of God. It's not meaning that you are a skeptical reprobate or some catastrophic label that people put on themselves. So I don't know if this is helpful for you, but I hope that in some way it gives you a little bit of comfort if you've been feeling like a terrible skeptic with lots of doubts. I don't think that's a good label. Just say that you're appreciating the mysteries of God. Blessings to you, and I will see you back next week.